Hello, DeMatha Nation, and welcome to our 75th anniversary DeMatha Speaker Series. My name is Ben Flary, DeMatha Class of 2011 and current staff member here at DeMatha. Uh, I'm joined today by fellow staff member Connor Glowacki, who will be helping me conduct today's interview with actor, screenwriter, producer, and director Daniel DeWeldon, a DeMatha Class of 1989. Daniel has starred and featured in many roles on stage, in television, and in film. DeWeldon has been honored with over 50 top critics' as choice and has featured on NPR for his outstanding acting performance. Uh, one of his latest projects is a feature film, The Elephant Ride. That is from an original screenplay that Daniel co-wrote in which he will star as billionaire Bradley Goldman, a young man stricken with cerebral palsy who hires Los Angeles' top high-performance Lamborghini limo driver, Vincent Viasso, to help him chase the love of his life to Las Vegas in the hopes of marrying her. The film is based on a true story. Now, Daniel is the son of famous sculptor Felix de Weldon, known for the famous Marine Corps War Memorial statue of the flag raising at Iwo Jima, which is the, uh, the and also, excuse me, the official United States presidential bust of John F. Kennedy and Harry S. Truman, just to name a few, um, as well as thousands of other art pieces that he completed uh, throughout his 96 year. Uh, in addition, Daniel will be playing the role of his father in a biopic um, that is labeled uh, Monumental. Uh, so looking forward to that as well. Uh, so with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our special guest uh, and fellow DeMath alumni, Daniel DeWeldon. Uh, good afternoon, Daniel, and thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, now, before we kind of get started, uh, just kind of want to see how you're doing and how your, you know, your life has been kind of since the pandemic has started. Uh, have there been any adjustments or changes uh, that you've had to deal with kind of in your, in your, in your working life uh, for the past 18 months? Absolutely, yes. It's been quite an adjustment uh, in that I lost three jobs that I was supposed to start right at the beginning of the pandemic. And so it kind of oh, wow. threw me off the radar for a bit, but uh, back up and running and, and uh, better for it and uh, exhilarated and excited to get back to work. And certainly you mentioned a couple of the projects that I'm working on. So yeah, it's been uh, you know, if there's ever a sense, the strongest shall survive, uh, this was one of them, you know, to each their own, you know, we're all dealing with it in one way or another. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey and uh, so much learned and now back up on the horse and, and back working. So yeah, that's kind of been my adjustment. Awesome. And then you were, we're, we're delighted to have you on today. Um, so kind of, you know, I want to take you back to your, the math of days. Now, kind of want to know what, what inspired you to become an actor, producer, screenwriter. Was it something that, uh, you know, you knew, you, you knew that you wanted to do maybe during your time at DeMatha or beforehand or afterwards? How did that kind of passion for, for acting and, and screenwriting, how did that come about? Yeah, good question. Um, <clears throat> well, I think I was toiling around with certainly being an artist just in the shadow of my father <clears throat> when I was at DeMatha. And um, I was headed to RISD, Rhode Island School of Art and Design to study sculpture. And <clears throat> I kind of got, I yielded to acting. Uh, I went to an acting class, uh, I think when I was around 19 or 20 in Los Angeles. And um, I just got inspired. I just sat in, in the class and it just spoke to me and it just, it never stopped since then. But I was initially inspired to be an artist just in, on the coattails of my dad being a sculptor and an artist. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, that was my inspiration, yeah. Dan, you probably get this question a bunch, but do you have any specific, are there any specific actors, producers, directors that whose work you were inspired by or looked up to when you're growing up and carving out your career? Yeah, that's another good question. Um, boy, there's so many, I mean, I think Steven Spielberg, I mean, he's kind of the cornerstone of, of uh, filmmaking and directing and storytelling, because I think he truly, he truly embodies uh, the full human experience and still keeps in mind the hope, you know, at the end of the journey. And certainly, you know, in this business, it's hard to break into the business. It's hard to keep working. It's Hard to be consistent and sometimes, you know, even for me speaking, I've taken on roles that have been very controversial and very intense. Um, but in my, in my scope of following uh, the likes of a Steven Spielberg in terms of getting roles that support that kind of storytelling. So he's always been an inspiration to me. I feel like he is the 
godfather of filmmaking and mm -hmm. uh and i think he he sets the standards so yeah he's always been my main go-to and certainly actors uh al pacino uh meryl streep denzel washington uh to name a few have always been inspiration to me as much yeah those are those are some great names right there um <laughs> Thank so you wanted to um, kind of talk a bit about the, the biopic coming up. So monumental that you're putting together. So you're going to actually be playing the role of your father. Um, so this must be, you know, very exciting for you, something that you've probably been looking forward to do for a while. Can you kind of maybe talk about that project a bit um, and kind of how that came up as well? Sure. Well, just to stand correct, I hope to be in the movie playing one part of my father. There'll be four Okay. stages of, of my father's life in the film when he's a, uh, an, a young boy, an adolescent, a, a young adult, and then an older man. And, uh, and the, older, the, the part of which it will take off from the age of 53 until the end of my father's life, which he died at 96, will likely cast a very big Hollywood name to play that part. We're actually in talks with a few now. Mm -hmm. um, but I hope to play you know, maybe the young man part of him uh, for a bit in the film, if it works out that way. But uh, yeah, the biopic is well on its way. Uh, we're literally in a final negotiation right now. It finally got option. Uh, I can't say the name yet, but uh, mm -hmm. this particular producer just won the 2021 Emmy Award for uh, producing and writing uh, just, just this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the script to her and she's, she's now signing on to option it. And um, so, yeah, it's moving forward in, in that regard from that placement now. And very excited, as you said, yeah, it's been long in coming, a lot of writing, mm -hmm. a lot of editing. Uh, you know, we've had the script out to everybody in Hollywood and uh, companies in Europe as well. And finally we have uh, someone's taken the bait, so to speak. And uh, it looks like it's gonna get produced. So we're very excited about that. Daniel, that's that's really exciting to hear. And Thank kind you. of going off top of that, you know, yesterday was Veterans Day. Uh, mm. how, how did your father feel about the Iwo Jima Memorial, you know, creating it? Obviously, it's one of the most popular in America's parks, represents so much to the history of our country. Uh, did Absolutely. he ever shed light to you um, on that? Uh, well, certainly he has. I mean, Interestingly enough, I mean, most of the information, he's, my father was very transparent in his, <clears throat> in his emotions about the work. And um, certainly it's been uh, publicized and, but certainly personally with me, same as which was publicized, he just, uh, that, that piece was so personal to him because as you may know, my father was a war refugee. <clears throat> in which he was received by Canada in 1938. My father was on the run. He was a uh, public enemy of Nazi Germany. <clears throat> this is kind of tough for me to talk about, but it's so personal. But anyway, he, most of all my father's immediate family uh, was executed in Nazi Germany. And so my father had a bit of great success early on in his life from the age of 16 on. And so he was already out of, uh, Vienna, Austria at the time when Nazi Germany occupied uh, during World War II. And my father could not get back in because he was noted as a public enemy of the state of uh, Nazi Germany. Oh, wow. And he took off uh, first to England and was receiving death threats there. And then he fled to uh, Canada. And then which thereafter he came down to the United, to the United States and uh, joined the United States Navy, became a citizen. He was labeled as just a private in the US Navy and also a naval artist. And it's exactly then that he got the uh, top secret photograph of the flag raising. <clears throat> the flag raising of Iwo Jima, which he was then uh, immediately inspired uh, to do a clay model. And it was interesting when that, when that happened, he didn't have any, he was only painting at the time. He had done plenty of sculpture, but he was on painting assignments for the US Navy to, uh, he was doing a painting of the Coral Sea at the time. And he was depicting 
the history of World War II as a naval artist for the United States government. And so when that picture came over the wire, he immediately, he didn't have any uh, traditional sculpting clay and he used floor wax mm -hmm. uh, to create the first uh, small scale model of the monument and then presented it to his superior officer at the time. And within two weeks, he was in the White House with Harry S. Truman. <clears throat> and it was then uh, commissioned to be a national monument. So my father's feelings to get back to your question, you could imagine he was, uh, here he was running for his life and the United States took him in, <clears throat> certainly Canada and then the United States. Uh, and I think his feeling of making that monument was so inspirational because uh, it was in retrospect to what was going on in his life at the time during World War II. And for many, for a good five or six years, my father didn't know if his family was still alive or not. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> you know, personally to me, it's, it's very emotional. It's very hard for me to talk about. So just from seeing my father be emotional about sharing stories with me about his family and certainly um, being able to give back such an iconic monument, because I think it was very cathartic and healing for my father to have such uh, a reception of his work to this country. Uh, and then certainly his career took off thereafter. So yeah, it was very personal to him, very personal to me. And that's unbelievable, Danny. And I'm I'm sorry if we you know offended you in any way in asking you that. Oh, um, I, I know. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that, that's that's an unbelievable story. And I'm and I you know I know you're you're very proud of him, and I'm sure he's he's super proud of you. And that's that's uh, that's just an unbelievable story. So thank you you know so much for for sharing that that with us. Um, thank that's, you, that's, Ben. That's, 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 that's really good. Remarkable. It's really going to be a great movie. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward. Yeah, that, to that, it. that yeah. for sure. Thank you for um, saying that. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Um, so kind of want to go again back uh, to your DeMatha days. Um, did you have, uh, you know, any favorite teachers, maybe favorite classes uh, during your high school days here? Or any, you know, maybe any that, that stuck out uh, to you? Absolutely. That is a, as the other questions were good questions, that's a tough question because <laughs> all, all the teachers at DeMatha were inspirational to me. That's a good answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just a tremendous uh, opportunity to be accepted uh, at DeMatha, you know, when I was a young man. And uh, certainly teachers that stood out to me were Mr. Macheski, which he may mm -hmm. not, I don't know if he's still teaching today, but he's he taught, not world, now. He taught world history. Uh, yep. Mr. McGregor, who is DeMatha's football coach, yep. uh, who was a tremendous int inspiration to me in English class. Uh, Father Burke, uh, who may not be there any longer, was mm. a huge inspiration. Um, let me think who else stood out to me. Uh, certainly Dr. Buck Offit, which I'm sure you guys have caught the history of who he is. He's oh, passed yeah. on. Um, so yeah, just a, a, a huge um, inspiration to me. And, and who stands out a lot to me, probably the most, is Father James. Uh, who was so supportive of me when I was a young man at DeMatha. And uh, I don't think if it, if it wasn't for DeMatha, I don't know if I would still be sitting here today. But, and he was, uh, he was your, your counselor, correct, uh, David? Yes, he was one of my, he was one of the uh, high school counselors and just okay. uh, an incredible support to me and uh, really took notice and uh, participated in my time at DeMatha, you know, along with That's all fantastic. the faculty. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, he's a, uh... You know, he's, he's obviously the, the president of DeMatha now, and I'm, you know, me and Connor are fortunate enough to, uh, you know, he works with us in the advancement office as well. So we're fortunate enough to see him, you know, day in and day out. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. We're, DeMatha is very lucky to have him. Um, and all, you know, all the other teachers as well. I mean, there's something, you know, I, I say in the water at DeMatha where these teachers come and they, you know, they stay for a long time. You know, you see a lot of schools, teachers are in and out. Uh, but we have a wall at DeMatha. It's, you know, teachers and, and staff that have stayed there for 20 years or longer. And it's filled. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, people just, they come here and they stay um, and, and they love it. So I think that's a testament to, uh, to DeMatha as an institution for sure. 
And I, and I wanted to and I wanted to add to Ben just the tremendous support uh, from Damatha uh, for me presently now. I mean, Damatha has reached out to me so many numerous times uh, and has been so supportive. So thank you guys for that. Of course. Yeah. Daniel, you know, interestingly enough, we have the uh, the math of players, the our acting group on campus. They're they're about to perform tonight. So what would oh, you so tell a what would you tell a current math student uh, who is interested in you know maybe trying to pursue acting, screenwriting, directing, trying to pursue a similar career that you have? What would be some advice you give to them? Well, first off, I would say education is imperative. Training is imperative, you know, and, and as, as you train, you start, you know, just like any profession in, in, in life, uh, training is imperative because you mature as you go along, but the training will always be the foundation uh, for any profession, but particularly for acting or writing or producing, really having the knowledge, the uh, up-to-date knowledge of what's going on in the industry you know, really embodying uh, doing plays as much as possible, theatrical plays uh, was my biggest influence. Uh, because even then when I transitioned into doing film, it was almost as, as, as if I was starting over because the camera is so sensitive, the camera sees everything just as the observer, whoever's watching the actor on camera. So I think that it's very important um, if the student of uh, wanting to be an actor is uh, truly interested in having a long career, the training is imperative because otherwise you get caught in playing cliches and stereotypes and things like that. And so it's very important to delve deep into the training because that then will reciprocate itself back into the actor, into themselves to understand who they are and to actually eventually be able to share themselves on camera or as, a, as an artist uh, that's truly authentic without covering or you know, playing stereotypes or things like that. So yeah, my, my best answer is training, training, training. Yeah, yeah that's, that's terrific. Thank you, David, uh, or Daniel, sorry. The last kind of, I'll let you go here. Uh, I'm curious, I know you're you know, involved in, you know, you've been involved in, uh, TV series, uh, film, uh, you've been on stage, uh, producing, directing, what's like, if you could only do one, I know that might be not a fair question to ask, what's like your favorite, what would be your favorite, like what's the number one, like would you rather be on TV, in a movie, producing, on stage, what's, what's kind of your favorite? Don't yeah, well, they, well they, all, they all serve the purpose for me as an artist, as a player, you know, as an actor, but I think in terms of being able to keep doing this business, you know, it's important to make money. So the money is in TV and film, and then you certainly are earning an income and you're also practicing again, training. So I would say television and film, certainly film, mm -hmm. because I think film, I mean, well, TV today uh, is pretty, pretty much dominating over film. I don't know if there's gonna be many movie theaters in the next five, 10 years, but- right. uh, <laughs> But yeah, I think anything that's uh, TV or film that's able to highlight and be very transparent because again, the camera is so sensitive and I think it speaks to a much wider audience and you can reach more people. And I'm the kind of artist that, uh, again, I'm inspired to do projects that are, uh, whether I'm playing the antagonist or the protagonist, I'm inspired to uh, inspire humanity to inspire the audience, you know, in a true heroic journey where the observer can watch and feel and then certainly heal from the experience of watching the story. So yeah, I would say television or film would be my favorite. Awesome. Well, I think that'll conclude our, our afternoon with you, Daniel. Thank you uh, so much for taking time out of your schedule uh, to join us today and, and to answer some questions. Uh, we're, we're huge fans of you, you know, not only here in DeMatha, uh, but in Maryland as well. So you make, you make the, the DeMatha community very proud uh, wow. and keep up the, keep up the great work. Uh, obviously, if you're ever by, you know, if you're ever in Hyattsville, D.C. area, 
you know, please stop by, say hello. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. We'd, love, we'd love to see you. Uh, and then again, yeah, if I'm, whenever I come down to California again, I will make sure to uh, give Absolutely. you a text. Uh, that would be, that'd be awesome. So thanks. Uh, thanks again. Yeah, thanks uh, for joining. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. I appreciate you guys. And uh, really great questions. And uh, go Stags. Go Stags, baby. That's All right, Daniel. Have a great right, weekend. Thank, thank you. Thanks, you guys, too. Take care. Take care.